Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. This is our weekly rundown of events, updates, and beautiful things happening within the Blender community, Blender Foundation, and also Blender as an app. And this week, we have a couple of cool stuff that you want to sit around for. First off, we have a brand new release of Blender 2.83.9. So this is, you know, a very clean release. And if you're following the LTS, you may want to take a look at this. If you're working with Snap, of course, you can get this downloaded. And if you're working with Steam, automatically, this is going to be, you know, updated for you. The whole reason for this LTS is so you can have stability. And for this particular one, 14 different bugs have been fixed. So just in case you are experiencing any of these bugs, you may want to update your Blender to the recent version of Blender, which is a much more stable one and get good with that now if you're working with usd there is a call for content as you know the development of usd is getting better for importing usd directly into blender the developers are calling for content so in case you are into working with usd you want to test this thing out or maybe you already have a usd file you can actually send this one i'm gonna put a link to this letter so just in case you want to read it up you can actually go ahead and read these things up so some very lovely discussions are here so you can follow up with the news and also see if this is something that you want to take a look at and with all of these beautiful things said right now let's dive directly into blender 2.92 and see some interesting updates so first update we are going to look at guys this week has been a it's been a mad marathon with the whole november thing and you know the geometry nodes and we did cover an extensive video about the geometry nodes link is going to be in the description for you to check that out but now let's take a look at some other things first things first we always talk about the ui and the reason why we're talking about the ui now is because there's an implementation to this so i'll show you guys what i mean let's actually do something very interesting i'm going to drag an amateur right there let me move this one over here and show you guys so if you go over to your outliner now and you click on the filter you can click down here and click on selectable now what the role of the selectable will do is it will help you select things within your outline so if i click down here and i choose to turn off light you can see the light is no longer there if i choose to turn off the amateur we would not be able to see that i can also do the same thing for camera and I would also not be able to see that. Now, you will not be able to select these things within your outliner, but once you're working within your viewport, you can still select it. So I have a suggestion, okay? So there's a suggestion I have for the developers. This is great, I like the whole idea here, but what if we can have an implementation where once this is no longer active here, it's also no longer active here. For example, let's also take a look at something that happens in Maya. So with Maya open here, what we have is uh, we have a simple scene. So let me just simply go around. And what we have is, you know, a very nice looking stuff. And all of these we're done with the formers. And if you look over here, once you turn off the mesh, you will not be able to select the mesh within your viewports. You can also choose to reference your meshes within this particular section. So right now, you notice I can't select this if I turn this on and I can go ahead and select that. I can also choose to turn this off and it doesn't matter if I reference this model or not. Okay, it doesn't matter whether I reference the model or whether I don't reference the model. Once this is turned off, you will not be able to select this. The same thing happens for amateurs or, you know, joints as they are called in Maya. Once you do that, you'll not be able to select this. If you turn it on, you will be able to select them at this point. So I really wish that, you know, the developers can look into this as this would actually come in handy. So I know a couple of people would be like, uh, that already exists. Yes, I know that exists. And what you guys are actually uh, talking about is this. So if I make sure I select everything and switch to all and click on this button and click right here. At this point, if you click on any of these things, you would not be able to select that particular one. And this is good before and after it is still good okay but what i'm saying in essence is this that once you click on the filter and you switch from here and go over to selectable and you turn off mesh it should be that the mesh disappears from here and the meshes within your viewport should not be selectable 
okay so i think that might just simply make sense so not the fact that you can select one after the other if that is the case i think you know not adding this might also be something that is nice but i love the idea that this is here all i'm trying to look at is if that will be implemented in such a way that once you say that you don't want lights to be selectable those lights should not be selectable right here within the outliner and also within the viewport they should not be selectable as well Let's also take a look at something cool that is also here. There is also a very cool update that uh, I don't think a lot of you guys actually work with this one, but I'll show you. So this deals with the video sequencer or, you know, the video editing section. So one of the updates that has been added here is if you click on the add button and you go click on text right now within the text section, you can, you know, you can obviously increase your size and do that stuff. But you would find that that we have a cool set of updates right here so now i can invoke a brand new box and i can make the color change so we can get a very cool color like so and at the same time i can throw in a shadow and you can see we have that right over here now this is not something that you have with any version of blender whatsoever so we are looking at blender 2.9 here and if we also scroll all the way to this point and you know jump back here click on add you know throw in that text right there and we increase the text about the point like this we only have the shadow okay so this is a very cool feature so right now you can now layer your text on top of object and you can literally play with it something else which is also being implemented because if you look around here as well you would notice that we also have the box margin so you can play with the box margin and you can you know do some very cool stuff with it this is also something that is here so one more cool feature or a couple more cool features about the video sequencer is this that if you also go over to your video sequencer by default let's grab an image so let's scroll all the way down maybe okay so maybe we're going to use uh an iris for example so i can click and drag and by default this is what you get with your video sequencer it doesn't look bad but it's not great either okay how do you manipulate this so how you regularly manipulate this in itself is a bit crazy because you don't know if you need to do the offsetting because offsetting means you need to be doing this and you have to turn that on and if you also choose to do the cropping and you click on the crop you would end up stretching the image and this is not good for business okay it is not good at all but now with 2.92 if you scroll all the way down and let's grab that image one more time so where is it okay so we have this image right here actually i think it's good to have this like so let me move that there so if we grab this image right here you would notice that the first thing is it frames the image to fit within the view okay that's one and two we now have a lovely transform contrary to what we used to have that was this okay this this doesn't look great okay so contrary to what we had there now within the transform you can choose to change the position however you want you can choose to change the rotation within the same transform node and now you can also choose to play with the scale so this is up to you and what you want to work with and if you like to make mirrors you want to mirror things around yes you can so every other thing that you want to do right now becomes even way more easy and if you like to do the cropping of course you can still do the cropping that exists right here but for the simple fact that once you bring in an image it actually conforms so let's also go ahead and try that with something else i would also drag this and drop and you can see it conforms exactly to the scale of what we have so with this set as well let's actually jump all the way back and take a look at the grease pencil so the grease pencil has a very tiny update to it so if i go over to the grease pencil and just simply drop a stroke right there and we switch to draw right now if you simply you know if you simply select your draw and go to cleanup you now have recalculate geometry some other updates that is here is the viewport clipping and this one is very cool and we also have an update to cycles with bbh building and this works in terms of you rendering stuff with cycles here in blender so with this said let's dive over and talk about you know the beautiful thing that's been happening all week and that is the geometry node so just in case you are new to this or you just haven't heard about it geometry node is here activating this is by going over to edit go to preference and you know once you go over to preference you can go right here to experimental and you can turn this on a couple of you guys were asking questions about where's the hair and where is the you know the simulation thingy 
this will come eventually but up until now this is not here so what you have is the geometry node and you can simply play with it so if you go over to nodes and you click down here you can select the node and you can start doing a lot of, of stuff okay so you can start doing a lot of things and we covered extensively a couple of things that you can do with that so you can do simple copy and paste and for sure if you like to do some boolean you can also get that boolean right there and drop the boolean and we can make a connection one connection two and then you can also drop this right over here and because this same boolean works with the native boolean that exists in blender you can literally use this and start creating some very cool stuff all right so you can you can make this and you can also drive this with something else so another thing that you can do is you can also choose to drive various things with different maps and different you know nodes that's available so if you tap shift and a these are the available nodes right now and you can literally use them for several stuff so depending on what you're trying to create you will be able to use these things to create some very lovely things at the end of the day so this is you know more like the updates that are available for the week we didn't get any tremendous updates coming from pablo this week we just didn't get anything coming from pablo and yes one more thing for those asking will the modifiers work yes the modifiers will work i mean like right now we only have the, the subsurface all right so this is the only one that is available right now so you can crank this up and for sure if you would like to create volumes and you want to control those volumes by simply using nodes yes you can so let's actually take a look at that and we can throw in a very empty one and click right here mesh the volume yes and we can simply select the cube and automatically you can see that so you can work procedurally you can control things however you want okay so you can control things however you want you can increase this you can reduce that you can still play with this however you choose if you would like to make some differentiation you can start noticing that we have some very interesting stuff right here so i think the possibilities of things that you can do with this is looking you know sort of endless so hopefully they are going to increase and create way more nodes and also make things better and for sure we also talked about exposing nodes so if you like to expose any of these nodes you can click and drag drop here and once you select and go back to where you have you know let's simply select the cube itself and we go back to the modifier you can now see that we have this okay so if you're also feeling excited about creating you know things like this yes you will find this one lovely and you find this very very cool and it's very interesting to see that the folks at blender foundation are working tirelessly to you know see that these things come to life and like i said in the previous geometry video if you would like to animate this yes you can also choose to animate this so right now you can literally control your clouds or you can control your you know your volumes by using the geometry node and you can animate these things on the fly so with all of these beautiful things said let's take a look at something else that you guys would like so if you are thinking about following up with the sprite fright animation that's going on right now you can go over to blender cloud and if you're a registered member of blender cloud you can follow up with the development some things here are just beautiful of course you're not going to get the file obviously but then you will also see how some of the work in progress looks like and speaking about things that you would also want to take a look at if you go over to the blender market right now and this one uh, i think this started within the week i did make an announcement about this one if you want to get simply clothes right now is at 33 percent off we've covered a couple of videos about them you can find them in the channel and the coupon code is hollow clothes or hall or cloth so you can use this to get get this amazing tool for 33 percent off and this works for both the pro version and also the standard so just in case you would be able to find that someone else that's giving out you know 10 percent off is the guys from transportation so these are the blender now guys and they're giving 10 percent off with the coupon code rick 10 and this is valid till the 15th of november and all of their four wheel vehicles here are fully rigged so in case you want to create animation all you need to do is get this add-on click drag the model directly into your viewport if you'd like to change skies you know you want to change the colors you want to drift you want to do some suspension you want to get your car models on the road and work with some pretty cool assets and also some utility tools that they have created right here you will be able to get this one going so that is all about it if you would like to download the 2.83.9 version right now you'll be able to grab this one either on the windows store steam or with snap 
And then if you're also excited about the USD stuff, you might want to send in your own USD, try out the USD features that exist with Blender. And if you're also interested with the Sprite Frights, you might want to find these ones here. Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section. And of course, if you like this video or you learned something from this, you can go ahead and give it a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And if you're new here, it's going to be amazing for you to hit the subscribe button and also turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next video or the next update. And until I see you guys again with the tutorial update, free Friday, tutorial Tuesday, tips and tricks, things like this. Peace.